All right, in this tutorial, we're going to cover the Bendix Magneto internal timing and point out some other key factors regarding the internal assembly of this Magneto. For this demonstration, we'll be working on an S6RN-201 Magneto. All right, we're going to start by removing this top cap here. And gently removing the cover. We've got some wires inside here. We've got to be very careful that we don't break. All right, here we're going to look at the data tag, and this is kind of where it's going to reflect the number that we're working on, and again, we're working on a S6RN-201 Magneto. When we see the R in that number, that talks about the rotation of our mag. So in this case, this Magneto is a clockwise rotating mag. Very important to know when we go back to reassembling this Magneto. All right, well, next we're gonna pull this top housing off, and I got these five screws that we're gonna remove. Okay, once we get those screws removed, we pull the housing up. Now this part right here can be a little tricky. Is fishing this wire through this housing. So we gotta be really careful that we feed it through very gently and that we don't catch anything on the way out. Now we got this lead removed from the housing. Now you can kind of see that inside this housing right here, I got this little area right here where when we go back together, we got to make sure that we place this wire in the correct position. If we don't, what can possibly happen is here's another coil from another project. And you can kind of see that the insulation is pretty well damaged from smashing it inside of the, the housing. I'm going to pull the cam gear off. Then we'll set that aside. All right, when we go back together, I'm not going to go any further than this as far as our magneto teardown goes. Uh, the reason why I went this far, uh, I'm not going to pull the coil out. I'm not going to pull the rotor out. Uh, but there's some things that I want to talk about uh, regarding this gear right here uh, when we do our reassemble. All right, when we install our uh, cam, it is keyed, so it only goes on one way. Okay. Now, if we look at the arrow that is on this cam, the arrow is going this direction. So we are right-hand rotating and it is clockwise rotating magneto. And we would view that from the drive end of the magneto. All right, we'll install the screw to hold the cam in place. And we want to make sure that we do look up the torque specs for this screw in our uh, TCM book for the 2200 series magneto. So we're going to get, in this case, we're just going to simulate torque. All right, when we go to assemble these, a couple things we got to take in consideration. The first thing is this gear. Now, if you look at this gear, we have some options. We got counterclockwise booster, counterclockwise normal, clockwise booster, clockwise normal. Now that all depends on the type of mag that we're working with. Now we already determined that we're working on a RN mag or a right mag, right hand rotating, which is clockwise rotation. So we know we want to be on this side. We also know since we have two sets of points in this mag, 
we're going to time it to the clockwise booster. If I was a single point mag, then I would go with clockwise normal. And it goes the same as if I was a left hand rotating mag, which would be counterclockwise, and the same would apply to the opposite side. Now in our case, you can already see that these little dots are marked with a die cam because we are a booster mag. We are clockwise, and if we even follow this road map around, and if we were to match up the opposite side, we would look inside this timing window. There's a chamfered tooth that is also marked with a red die cam. Okay, and that's to help us set up our alignment when we assemble this housing on top of our rotor. The next thing we need to note is where our chamfered tooth is on this distributor gear. Now, a lot of times it's really difficult to identify that chamfered tooth. So the easiest way to determine the location of it is, is find the keyway. And if you can locate the keyway on the rotor shaft, and you'll note that the chamfered tooth on this one is on the bottom side. A lot of times it's really hard to identify, but the easiest way to identify that is by the keyway, and then that should align with that notch or that chamfered tooth on this particular gear. To simplify things, I'm going to use this lockdown tool. Now keep in mind, TCM recommends you not using this tool. Uh, they're afraid that you will damage the gear, but in this case we're going to use extreme caution so we remember it's installed, we don't rotate nothing, we don't damage anything inside this magneto. Now, I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to insert it on that red chamfered tooth marked with the red die cam pin. And that's just going to hold this in alignment as I insert this housing onto the other part of the magneto. Alright, we got our tool installed. And again, if we look at the back side of our gear, our red chamfered tooth is lined up with this road map. And if I follow it around, I'm on clockwise booster. And I can note that I have that red dot lined up in my window, which will match up to that chamfered tooth on the rotor gear. All right, to verify our alignment, I rotated this gear and facing me towards this coil tab is that chamfered tooth and if I look at the bottom side of that I'll see the keyway to help me identify the correct tooth that is chamfered. The next thing we really got to pay attention to is this coil lead. Okay, If we follow the manual, the manual gives us instructions on how to properly fit this through this housing and, in, and the, the manual gives you a really good detailed picture on how we properly route this. Now as we as, install our assembly, the first thing we need to do is fish this wire back through this housing. And we want to make sure that we tuck it down inside that housing piece. We got the assembly installed. Now I will install my four, my five screws. And we'll go ahead and tighten these down. All right, now that we've got the housing installed, we wanna make sure that we follow the torque specs and torque these five screws per the TCM manual. For this demonstration, I'm just going to simulate torque. All right, before we hook our timing plate up to our magneto, we got to find zero for our timing plate. So what we need to do is we need to find that neutral plane. And how we do that is we reference that red mark in the window, and we're going to rotate this, and we feel it where that magnet catches. Now some eggs are really touchy, and so you really got to kind of just slowly work it until you can feel that magnet catch, So, and it should just stay right where it's at. Now if I'm slightly off, you can kind of see that it wants to kind of rotate 
off to one way and if that same thing with the other side it wants to pop off to the other side so you want to rotate that till it just catches and stays and you have that red chamfer tooth in the timing window all right with the magneto in the neutral position we're going to set our timing plate and our tiding, timing needle at zero and this is where we're going to use as a reference as we adjust the timing now again keep in mind we're our right hand rotating mag and so on our data tag you can it makes it kind of easy for us because it has it marked R and L and in our case we're going to move the needle towards R now per the manual it states 10 degrees for the primary points and so we're going to rotate that to 10 degrees and that will be where we're determining our E gap position all right we're going to rotate this 10 degrees. Alright, now we've got our timing light hooked up. Now in this case, since I got two sets of points, I'm going to hook the timing light to one lead to each set of points. For me, it makes it a little bit easier when I'm making my adjustments. Now for the primary points, again, we're set at 10 degrees. And then we'll go ahead and adjust the points to where they just break open. We got those set for 10 degrees. Now, if we want to just take a quick verification just to see if we have them set correctly, we can rotate this and see when those points break. Now, you can kind of see that I'm off a degree or two, so I can make another slight tweak to those points to get them to break open right at 10 degrees. All right, after doing some adjusting, just to show you, this is what we're looking for. So we're looking for those points just to break open at 10 degrees. Now there are some other specifications in the manual to make some point measurements uh, to verify if your points are within serviceable limits. So we do need to make sure we note the TCM overhaul manual for uh, the specific point specifications. Now for the second secondary set of points to determine what the leg number is you can look inside the housing right here and then there's a stamp that tells us we're going to adjust these to 30 degrees. So the same process follows as we're going to rotate this to 30 degrees turn our timing light on At this point our points are timed uh, primary and secondary and now we can uh, disassemble our equipment all right for the final installation of our wire we want to refer to the TCM manual on the proper orientation for this wire so as for our main contact point assembly we want to bring this around and then we will attach this to our points. Now for the top housing we have a capacitor wire is going to go to our points and then our leg wire is going to go to our secondary points and then we can go ahead and restall our top cover. Alright as I finally assemble the top housing And we want to verify in the manual that again that these four screws are properly torqued per the manual. All right, and the last thing we want to check is just verify that our red mark and red transfer transfer tooth is in the window, and then that mag is ready to, to be installed. So when this goes on the aircraft, this red mark should be visible in that window when this magneto is installed on the aircraft engine.